So, you want to get into the world of espresso. Become a part of that hobby with a seemingly endless obsession over machines and tools that cost anywhere from hundreds to thousands of dollars. All just to produce that bean juice that we all know and love and drink every morning just to produce marginally better tastes than what you can grab at your nearest coffee shop for just five bucks. Well, you're going to need an espresso machine. Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going over my tips to help you decide on what to pick for your first espresso machine. As always, timestamps and links to all products featured will be in the description down below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to go and hit that subscribe button. So first, why should you take my advice? Well, about 10 months ago from the date of recording, I was in the same position as you, looking for a good espresso machine with a combination of features and aesthetics that I liked. So I've compiled everything that I've learned over the last 10 months into one single video to help you decide what machine to pick for your home usage. Note that this is not a commercial espresso machine video, and I am not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by any of the companies or brands mentioned in this video. Okay, so there are a lot of things to consider when you're choosing your first espresso machine, and in my opinion, these are things that you should keep in mind. First is budget, second is experience with specialty coffee, third is feature set, and fourth is good old upgrade-itis. So first, let's talk about budget since that's most likely your limiting factor. When you look at any forum or resource online, a lot of people always mention that the grinder is oftentimes more important than the espresso machine itself, so be sure to take that into account when you're budgeting to design your own coffee station at home. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave the espresso grinder out of this budget because that's an entirely separate video on its own. But in general, you can expect these grinders to be anywhere from 300 ish dollars on the low end, something like the $700 niche zero, all the way up to those people who are using an EK43 or an EG1 at home that go upwards of three grand. So for a home espresso machine, I've sort of broken it down into a few different categories. You have the off-the-shelf appliances or things that you find on Amazon or Target off the shelf, and generally they fall within that $300 range. But I will give a special mention to Breville. Breville has a huge line of machines that are extremely popular, ranging all the way from as low as $300 up to $2,500. For the next category, you've got what I like to call the entry-level prosumer machines, and these would be machines kind of like the Gadget Classic Pro, the Rancilio Silvia, and there's a few other machines from brands like Bezerra and ECM. In general, these typically fall within the $500 to $1,000 range. Upwards of that, you're falling into the range of machines like the Rocket that I have, that features an E61 group head and parts that are more similar to that of a cafe or a commercial machine. In general, these are going to run you around $1,400 and all the way up to $3,000 on the high end. And finally, you have what I call the flex machines. And I call it that because 99% of you at home absolutely do not need a machine to this extent. And for this category, I'm talking machines that go upwards of $5,000, something like the Linnea Mini, a GS3, or even a Slayer espresso machine. There are two more categories I want to mention, but I don't think it's super relevant for the purposes of this video. So first, manual or full lever machines, kind of like the Flare or the Rock, generally within the two to $300 price range. Within the same category, you kind of have machines like the La Pavanis that are usually around $1,000 to $2,000, then you've got the Cremina machines, which are upwards of $3,000. And two, for decent espresso machines. I think these machines are kind of in a category on its own because it's super unique. So if you're in the market for a full manual or lever machine, that's probably a topic for another video. And chances are, if you're in the market for something like a decent espresso machine, you already know what it is and probably have more experience of espresso than I do to begin with. Okay, so in my opinion, let's say you're in the off-the-shelf machine kind of budget. In my experience, and from what I know, you're gonna want to go with Breville. In general, I think that these machines are typically still more categorized as an appliance rather than something like a prosumer home machine, but from what I've read and seen, they are extremely popular. They seem to generally have good customer support, a range of accessories, and still produce good espresso, of course. On the low end, you've got a machine like the Breville Bambino, which costs about $300, and on the high end, you have something like the Oracle Touch, which goes for $2,500. One of the benefits to a machine like the ultra-popular Breville Barista Express is the built-in grinder, which for most is going to be completely satisfactory. These machines are 100% capable of pulling a great shot, and in some cases offer even more features than machines in a higher category of a higher price point. As with all hobbies, do keep in mind the law of diminishing returns. Spending more money on a machine does not mean you're going to get better tasting espresso. For the entry-level prosumer machines, you have something like the Gadget Classic Pro, a machine that I previously owned, as well as other machines like the Rancilio Silvia. These will work much more similar to a typical kind of cafe style workflow where you are still going to need a separate grinder as well. Something I particularly like about the Gagia is that there's a huge community supporting this product and there's a whole range of different mods that you can do such as installing a PID or adjusting a pressure using the OPV mod to make it 9 bars. And if properly cared for, these machines can certainly last decades. In fact, just browsing different coffee forums and subreddits, you'll find people posting pictures of their decade-old Gagia machines. The next category are the more prosumer high-end machines, something like my Rocket Apartamento. And in general, machines in this category are going to 
fall within the $1,400 to $3,000 price range. Some popular alternative brands are Lalite and Profitech Pro, and these were some of the ones that I was considering before settling on the Rocket. And on the high end in this category, you have a machine like the Lalite Bianca that's around $3,000. These machines use parts that are more similar to what you might find in a cafe, with a standardized group head, which is the popular E61 group head, as well as typical 58mm port filters. These machines are usually also pretty heavy and feel built to last, with my Rocket weighing in at 50 pounds. In most cases, you'll see improvements to general workflow or better consistency compared to machines in a cheaper category. These machines also tend to all look very similar with that very specific generic kind of E61 group head chrome box that you see a lot of people have at home. And then finally, with the flex machines like the La Marzarco Linnea Mini or the GS3, or even Slayer machines. These machines are going upwards of $5,000 and well into the five-figure range, which is certainly overkill for the average home user. But if you do have the budget and you want a statement piece, then this is probably the way to go. So moving on to my next point now is experience with specialty coffee. Are you looking to get a home espresso machine because you like a latte from your local Starbucks or because you really enjoyed a cappuccino from a local specialty roaster? If you want something that's gonna get you most of the way there but can't be bothered to dial in or taste the nuances in espresso, then you'll probably be satisfied with one of the appliance level machines or one of the lower end Breville machines. But if you can already tell that you're going to enjoy the process of dialing in and trying to hit those wild flavor tasting notes that you see on the bags of beans that you have buy, then maybe look towards some of the higher end Breville machines or into the higher end prosumer level machines. Feature set is probably going to be the next thing you're going to look into and it's definitely the most important after considering your budget. When it comes to the prosumer range of machines, you have a few different types of machines as well as features that are included with those machines. So machines like the Gadget Classic Pro are single boiler machines where you will need to wait for your steam to heat up to power after pulling a shot of espresso. Heat exchanger machines like the Rocket can do both, where you can both brew and steam at the same time, or after pulling a shot, you don't have to wait at all to then steam a milk pitcher. And then you have dual boiler machines, which has a separate boiler for both steaming and for brewing. Between these three main types of machines, single boilers are going to be your cheapest, with the heat exchangers and the dual boilers being on the higher end side. After that's been decided, you're going to want to think about what are some other features that you might want. From what I know and I've learned, you have options like PID, pre-infusion, and flow control, just to name a few. There might be more features that I'm missing, but these are the ones that generally I see people talk about. So when choosing which of these features you want, it's very important to consider this. The more variables you have to change, the longer it's gonna take to dial in a shot, and the easier it's gonna be to mess up a shot. Think about it this way. If you have a new bag of beans to dial in, you already have two variables that you can control, your dosing size and your grind size. If you add pre-infusion to the list, now you have three variables to control. Add PID, and you have four. Add flow control, and now you have five. With my rocket, all I have to do is adjust the grind size as long as I'm sticking to my usual 20 gram dose. But if I want to mess with the pre-infusion feature that's available on the rocket, now I have to add that to the list and consider how long do I want to run a pre-infusion prior to pulling a shot. If I wanted to add PID and flow control, well now you have a full range of temperature choices to choose as well as different flow profiles, which again, makes dialing in a shot a lot more difficult and more time consuming. So the question here is how specific exactly do you want to go? Do you enjoy the process with lots of variables to change? Then find a machine like the Lilith Bianca, which has all of these features. Do you not want to mess with too many things? Then maybe pick up a rocket or a similar machine. Do you want to achieve peak coffee science or peak coffee nerd? Get a decent machine. Having your budget locked down and picking out the variables that you want in your coffee machine will be the easiest way to narrow down your search. Although, do keep in mind that you might not find a machine with these features that are in your budget as well. So here are my final recommendations. For most people who are making either a single drink or maybe just a few drinks at a time and do want that kind of home barista feel, pick up a machine like the Gadget Classic Pro. I had it before, it's a great machine, and I have plenty of videos on kind of my workflow around that machine when I used to have it. A good alternative to that, if you have a bigger budget, might be something like the Rancilio Silvia, as you can definitely benefit from a lot of the extra steam power, assuming you like milk drinks. For those who want to play around the process a little bit more and want a little bit of a beefier looking machine, something with an E61 group head, consider a machine like the Rocket Apartamento, or maybe something like the Lilith Mara X, which also has a PID. And finally, if you just want what the absolute best in the world espresso has to offer at home, get one of the flex machines like a Linnea Mini, GS3, or even a Slayer machine if you've got the budget for it. At the end of the day, it really depends on what you want to do at home. Do you want to make a solid drink every morning that tastes good enough, or do you want to spend time dialing in your shot for that quote-unquote god shot? And last but not least, don't forget about upgrade-itis. If you have a tendency to upgrade your things quick and you know you're going to fall down that rabbit hole, I would say pull the trigger from the start. Looking back now, although I don't regret having the Gajia, had I known what I was missing out on with the rocket, I probably would have just gone for the rocket straight away. So, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your coffee friends, and I'll see you in the next one.